So you heard we're not hiring, and now you think you ain't ever going to have a job. I heard, guess what? God got something better for me. That's not faith. That is dangerous, though. When you hear people talk about faith, especially different preachers, especially today's preachers, some of the more younger, the newer preachers out there, when they talk about faith, they use it as a tool to kind of motivate people to encourage as a pep rally. Something wrong with motivating people and encouraging people, but when you use it in an improper fashion, then what it does is it becomes something dangerous for the person because the object of their faith, that is getting something or getting out of something, getting away from something, doesn't happen. And then the people become distraught. Uh, They lose faith, so to speak. They end up being discouraged. It has a negative effect. So they don't get the house, the car, the person, the money, whatever it is, or the health that they're looking for. And then who do they blame? They'll blame themselves. They'll even blame God. They'll blame life. And then as uh, what can happen is they can despair of life. And so I want to listen to this particular person preaching. Uh, It I think he's probably, maybe his heart is in the right place. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. But what he's saying, that's just not faith. There's a frequency to faith. When people are walking by sight, they will never understand the frequency of faith that you have. Now, when people use this this statement, this, and I don't know where he's getting this from, this frequency of faith. Maybe just cute little words. This is from the church. I think it's here in, in Dallas called Social Dallas. I've never heard of it before, but Social Dallas. Okay, fine. But there's a frequency of faith. No, there's not. But he's trying to get people to understand that you got to walk a certain way. You've heard the passage. Uh, Paul says we walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith doesn't mean looking for things that aren't there. Walking by faith means walking because of what you have seen, what you do know to be true. That's what it means to walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, the situation looks this way. But I've seen and heard what God has done and who God is. And we'll talk about that even more because that can be a bit confusing for some people. So we'll talk about what it means to have faith, not this dangerous kind of faith, which really isn't faith. Because faith hears things different. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So- All right, we'll stop again. He says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. People think that this passage in Romans ten seventeen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that this is this means you have to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing over and over. That's not how faith comes because that's not the word that's used. The word that's used here is the now akaes, which is the report. Faith comes based off of the report, what we know to be true, not hearing something over and over and over again, being encouraged by something. Faith doesn't come by of the verb hearing, but from the now, the report. Well, what report? You know, the report that says that Jesus died for us and that also it states that we ought to know the whole report, report, not just getting part of the report, but the whole report. The whole report tells us that any of us that desires to live in Christ, what's going to happen? We shall suffer persecution. Paul talks about our light and momentary afflictions won't be long, but it's going to lead to something greater. So what happens when we fall into some sort of thing that we don't like, some sort of affliction, some pain, we think that we're supposed to get out of it. Well, Paul tells us differently. The Bible tells us differently. That some of us are going to suffer those things and we may never leave those things. And so if you think that faith is getting you out of those things, then you're going to leave people in despair and distraught, not even knowing what true faith is. We're going to talk about true faith in a minute. So don't leave. We're going to talk about what it is and how you actually use what you know to develop true faith and to grow in that. So we can hear the same thing, but have two different perspectives. So you heard we're not hiring, and now you think you ain't ever going to have a job. I heard, guess what? God got something better for me. That other job must have better benefits and better packages. Thank you, Jesus. Are you tuned in to the frequency of faith? Again, that's not faith. Faith does not say that uh, the boss says that you're not going to get this job. You're not going to get hired. You're not going to get this raise. No, that's not what faith is. Faith is, I'm okay no matter what. Faith is, as Paul says, faith is being content irrespective of the situation. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, he says, therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. That's not what he's saying. Paul is saying something different than what this pastor is saying. Faith is not that, well, I heard you tell me no, but someone's going to tell me yes. 
I didn't get this promotion, but I'll get the next promotion. I didn't get this job, but I'll get the next job. I didn't get this car, but I'll get the next car. I didn't get this house, but if there's another house better for me. No, you may never get the house. You may never get a promotion. You, matter of fact, you might get fired. You may become homeless, whatever. I don't know what's going to happen. Faith is not um, having something in you to get you something uh, that you want. Faith is not um, having uh, the belief that things are going to come to pass the way you want them to. No, faith is regardless if those things ever come or not, I'm content. That's Paul's point. Faith is the substance or the assurance that things hope for, the conviction, the things not seen. Well, people take those things and mean that that's stuff. Those are things. No, the things that are hoped for, the conviction of things not seen is what God has done, knowing, trusting God is there. That's why Jesus in the boat gets up, he rebukes the wind and the waves, then turns around and rebukes them for not having faith. Jesus is there. They wanted to, they wanted something calm, something comfortable. No, Jesus wants them to understand that as long as you got me and you rest on that, that's faith. That's what true faith is. Faith comes, faith shows itself by you being content. If you never get the job, faith shows yourself by being content. If you never get the promotion, if you never get the car, if your health never recovers. Why? Because what you do is you lean on the one who is strong. You recognize that you are weak and that he is strong. And however he takes you, fine, as long as he's with you. Remember, the Bible wants us to test, God wants us to test our faith. How do we know so? Because James says, count it all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials. Why? There's a purpose to these tests. Knowing that the testing of your faith, the faith that you have, should be tested and it shall produce endurance. What happens if your, your faith is, I've got faith to get this or to make it through? make it to uh, better health, uh, better finances, better whatever. And if you don't get it, well, then what does that say about your faith? If that's what it's rooted and grounded in. But if your faith is being secure, regardless, whether the day is a good day or bad day, whether it's sunny or it's raining, that's true faith. That's real faith. Faith to be assured that whatever I get, it's okay. Whatever I don't get, it's okay. Because what I do have that's most important is him. And oh, by the way, this is just the, this is the warmups. This is the warmups for the next life. This is not where our faith should be focused on. If the object of your faith are the blessings in this life, well, then you're going to be very disappointed when you get to the next life, which is going to be a lot longer. The object of our faith is focused on what we're going to get. Let me put it this way. When I was poor, if someone could have told me that here comes the eviction notice, here comes the disconnect notice. As a matter of fact, the electricity is off. The water is going to be turned off. There's a car. There's a truck outside repossessing my car. I've got all these different bills coming in. But then I've also got a smile on my face. Why? Because maybe I received a letter from my great, great uncle who died and left me a billion dollars. Am I concerned about the things that are happening now? No, because in the future, I've got a more exceeding, a better reward. Well, that's how it should be with us. In the future, I've got a better reward. So whatever happens on this earth, I'd like to be comfortable. i like to have money. i like to be content. I'd like to have good health, see my children safe. But what I really have is an assurance, which the writer of Hebrews is saying, an assurance that takes me to heaven. And so in spite of what's happening, I've got joy. And then what will God end up seeing if he sees that kind of faith? He wouldn't have a problem with blessing you. Why? Because the blessings won't take you away from him and you won't be looking for the blessing. Instead, your faith will cause you to look for the blesser, cause you to look for the face of God, not the hand of God. Amen.